Hi guys, and welcome back. We are heading into the windmill. So let's get going. As you say. I just gotta turn it down in my ear here. I'm gonna go back and get this. Love letter. Um we'll read these um when we get all twelve. Some of them are pretty pathetic anyway, um, but we'll wait until the we get all twelve of them here. I locked myself in a cage once when I was a child. <laughs> For an entire day. Ah, good times. Oh, I hate these places. At the very least, it doesn't look to be much used. I wonder who built this tunnel, and why. <laughs> these things can have unusual powers. Get away from me! Hello? Who's there? Is there anyone alive out there? Wait, you don't look like the Arlesser's guards. Are you from outside the castle? Uh, possibly. Who are you supposed to be? My name is Jowan. I'm a mage Lady Isolde hired to tutor her son Connor. Until they uh, threw me into the dungeon here. Oh, you're the one that poisoned the R. I'm not proud of it. The Arlesa had no idea what I was hired to do when she took me in to tutor Connor. I... I know it looks suspicious, but I'm not responsible for the creatures and the killings in the castle. I was already imprisoned when all that began. At first, Lady Isolde came here with her men, demanding that I reverse what I'd done. I thought she meant my poisoning of the Arl. That's the first I heard about the walking corpses. She thought I'd summoned a demon to torment her family and destroy Redcliffe. She had me tortured. There was nothing I could do or say that would appease her. So they left me to rot. Uh, why did you poison Arl Eamon? I was instructed to by Terran Loghain. I was told that Arl Eamon was a threat to Ferelden, that if I dealt with him, Loghain would settle matters with the Circle. You see, I'm a Malifica, a blood mage. A blood mage? Well, that isn't good. Ah. Uh. I thought you looked familiar. I had thought you... dead. Hunted down by the Templars. I guess you might have been told that. I was in hiding when I was caught. But instead of killing me, Loghain made me an offer. But he's abandoned me here, hasn't he? Everything's fallen apart and I'm responsible! I have to make it right somehow. I have to! Um... So, Tan Loghain hired him... or er, himself hired you. Yes. When the Templars caught me, they brought me to Denerim to await execution. Eventually, someone came to see me, alone. It was the Terran. I'd seen paintings of him, so I knew. I thought he'd have me executed right there. But he said I could make up for my crime. He said I would be helping the country. Um, let's see. But why did the Arasa need a maid to tutor her son? Connor had started to show signs. Lady Isolde was terrified the circle of magi would take him away for training. Connor? A mage? I can't believe it. She sought an apostate, a mage outside the circle, to teach her son in secret so he could learn to hide his talent. Her husband had no idea. Um, perhaps her son is responsible for what happened. I thought that too. Connor has little knowledge of magic, but he may have done something to tear open the veil. With the veil to the Fade torn, spirits and demons could infiltrate the castle. Powerful ones could kill and create those walking corpses. Uh, so why would Isol be frightened of her son becoming a mage? Because he would be taken away, forever. A mage cannot inherit a title, even the son of a powerful Arl. She's also a pious woman. Her son having magic was... humiliating. And Arl Eamon had no idea of his son's abilities? 
No, she was adamant that he never find out. She said that he'd do the right thing, even if it meant losing their son, and that infuriated her. How much magic did you teach Connor? Some, but he's still very young. He can barely cast a minor spell, never mind something more powerful. At least not intentionally. Like I said, he may have torn the veil accidentally. If he's involved in this at all, I really don't know. I see, I think I understand. I never meant for it to end like this. I swear. Let me help you fix this. He wishes to redeem himself. Doesn't everyone deserve that chance? Jowen has good intentions, but a blood mage? I... I find it difficult to trust his words. I don't know. He is a blood mage. But this is an unusual situation. Give me a chance, please. So, when I am mage from the tower, I release him. Any other ones, I don't. Um, I think you should stay in your cell for now. And I will wait. If you change your mind, I will be here. Because, you know, unless you're a blood mage, or blood mage, um, mage from the tower, uh, you really don't have a connection with him. Yeah, you, and especially her who's grown up as noble and blood magic is, I don't think she, you know, forbids it, but I don't think she approves of it when you create such disaster. Um, so we're gonna let him sit there and we'll probably turn him to the circle. Um, blood magic, the forbidden school. Foul and corrupt are you who have taken my gift and turned it against my children. Transfiction, uh, Transfiguration 1810. The ancient Deventers did not originally consider blood magic a school of its own. Rather, they saw it as a mean to achieve greater power in any school of magic. The name, of course, refers to the fact that the magic is of this type uses life, specifically in a form of blood, instead of mana. It was a common practice at one time for Manchester, or Manchester, ugh, I can't talk today, or any day, to be honest, uh, to keep a number of slaves on hand so that should he undertake the workings of a spell that was physically beyond his abilities, he could use the blood of his slaves to booster the casting. And that, that to me is wrong. I mean, you use like small amount of blood, that's fine, and it should come from yourself, um, you know, and create that magic magic, but you should never siphon um, from other people or can, you know, kill them in the process. That's just wrong. Uh, over time, however, the Imperium discovered the type of spells that could only be worked by blood. Although Lyrium will allow a mage to send his conscious mind into the Fade, blood will allow him to find the sleeping minds of others, view their dreams, and even influence or dominate their thoughts. Just as treacherous blood magic allows the veil to be open completely so that demons may physically pass through it into our world. The rise of the Chantry of Light and the substance falls of the old, <coughs> old Imperium has led to blood magic, being all the stamped out as it should be, for it poses nearly as great as a danger to those who would practice it as it is to the world at large. From the four schools of treaties by the first enchanter Joseph. All right. Apostates. It is not uncommon for Nephites to mistake apostates and Mechum as one and the same. Indeed, the Chantry has gone to great lengths over the century to establish that this is so. The truth, however, is what an apostate is often a Mephikara. He needs not to be so. A Mephikara is a mage who employs forbidden knowledge such as blood magic and the summoning of demons, whereas an apostate is merely any mage who does not fall under the aspects of a circle of magi, and therefore the Chantry. 
they are hunted by Templars, and quite often they will turn to forbidden knowledge in order to survive. But it would be a lie to say that at all apostates begin that way. Hysterically, apostates become in such one of two ways. They are either mages who have escaped from the circle, or mages who are never part of the to begin with. The later category includes what we tend to refer as head mages, those with magical abilities out in the hinterlands who follow a different magical tradition than our own. Some of these head mages are not even aware of their nature. Undeveloped, their abilities can express themselves in a variety of ways, which the hedge mage might attribute to faith, or will, or to another entity or being ent entirely, depending on his nature. Some of these traditions are passed down from generation to generation, as the so-called witches of the chastened wilders of the shamans of Avar barbarians. No matter how a mage has become apostate, the chantry treats them alike. Templars begin a symptomatic hunt to bring the apostates to justice in almost all cause, uh, all cases. Justice is uh, execution. If there is some overriding reason the mage should live, the right of tranquility is employed instead. Whether we of the circle of magi believe this system is fair is irrelevant. It is what it is. From patterns within forms by Hayden, first enchanter of Star Cabin, 880. Blessed. Okay. Note. A rolled up note. I hope whoever finds this can read it. I hate the thought that my last words might be used as kindling or make her forget, forbid, to wipe someone's bum. But that's what happens since for you, I suppose. My name is Bran. I was born in Rainsphere. I grew apples once upon a time. When the Elysian came to demand I bow to the Empire, I turned them away. They set fire to my orchards. I turned them away, or er, well, to my house too, but I didn't care. I stood and watched them burn. Trees died eventually, House, uh, houses fall, but my honor cannot be lost only if I let it. They came back a week later and demanded that I swear an oath. This time, when I refused, they clapped me in irons. Now I'm here, and I'll die in this place. It seems a foolish thing to die for, doesn't it? I could have said a few words and rebuilt my home, gone on with my life as if nothing had changed. A hundred generations of my family have lived and died on that land, and I won't be the one to trade our family's honor for apples. Whoever you are, whatever they brought you here for, if you leave this place, I hope you go to Rainsphere. There's no living remnants of us left there, but you'll find my family all the same. We're stamped onto the earth. We're in the winds that rustles the streets. Tell my family how I died, and I promise you, they'll hear. Bran. Another point. Another point. Are we keeping track? It is begun.
as you say. Very well. Okay. It shall be done. Hi, puppy. Do you see anything interesting? Oh, he doesn't find anything. Oh, well. Off we go. Guys, the history of the Chantry, Chapter Two. When the Prophet Andrestate and her husband Mafur arrived at the head of the barbarian horde, the southern Tevinter was thrown into chaos. The Imperium had defeated against invasions in the past, but now they stood without the protections of their gods. With the army in tatters and their country devastated by the blight, many felt that the timing of the invasion was yet another of the Maker's miracles in Andraste's campaign to spread his divine word. Andraste was more than a symbol, or simply the wife of the warlord. After all, she was also the betrothed of the Maker. Enraptured by the Melchizedek, melancholic sound of her voice as she sang to the heavens for guidance. The maker himself appeared to Andraste and proposed she came, she'd come with him, leaving behind the flawed world of humanity. In her wisdom, Andraste pleaded with the maker to return hi to his people and create a paradise in the world of men. The maker agreed, but only if all of the world would turn away from the worship of false gods and accept the maker's divine commandments. Um, armed with the knowledge of the one true god, Andraste began the exiled marches into the weakened Imperium. One of the Maker's commandments, that magic should serve man rather than rule over him, was as honey to the souls of the downtrodden of Deventer, who lived under the thumb of the Manchester, or Manchester, uh, I am going to have a hard time saying that today. Uh, words of Andrastate excelled marches of her miracles and military success spread far and wide. Those in the Imperium who felt that the old gods had abandoned them eagerly listened to the words of the Maker. Those throngs of restless citizens that destroyed temples now did so in the name of the Maker and his prophet Andraste. As Mirtha's uh, armies conquered the lands to the southern Deventer, so did Andraste's words conquer the hearts. It is said that the Maker smiled on the world at the Battle of Varen Fields, in which the forces of Mathras challenged and defeated the greatest army Deventer could muster. The southern reach of the mighty Imperium now laid at the mercy of the barbarians. Faith in the Maker, boasted but such miracles, threatened to shake the foundation of the Imperium apart. Of course, the human heart is more powerful than the greatest weapon, and when wounded, it is capable of the blackest of deeds. From the Tales of the Destruction of Thetis, by Brother Chantivy, Chantry Scholar. Okay, let's save this quick here. Any goodies from you? No. Let's take care. Give me. Very well. 
It is begun. Open up. I shall do it. As you say. Alright. Glitter. And glittery. Very well. Thank you. And another glitter. I shall do it. Alright, let's see what we got. I shall do it. And that's probably because we collected a bunch of, yeah. A bunch of corp, whatever it's called. All right, Alistair, let's level you up here. Go corpus gal. Anyway. <clears throat> Alright, let's save. Because believe it or not, I sometimes have a hard time with these dots. Is to put a new collar on you here. As you say. Ah, please don't hurt me. <laughs> Calm down. 
down. I'm not going to hurt you. I... I'm sorry. I'm so frightened. These monsters are everywhere. They are. My... My name's Valena. The Arlesa's maid. Is she... All right. What happened to everyone? Valena the Smith's daughter? You know my father. I want to go back to the village. Is there a way out of here? There's a tunnel that leads out in the dungeon. But, but the monsters! Um, I've killed most of them. It's safe. I'll find my way. I can run fast and I know the castle. Thank you. Approvals, Liliana. Because I really need, you know, more approvals. But hey, we'll take them, right? Now the stairs up there. Cares for me. Yay. As I say. <clears throat> As you say. All right, guys, we're getting there. Is begun. And another love letter. Like I said, we'll take care of those at the end of the game. Some of them are kind of questionable anyway, so. <laughs> Alright. Um, save. Let's get rid of some of these. Delete, save, delete, save. Okay. Save. Yes, please. Dog, would you be so kind to pee on this tree? Get the reverend. Get the reverend. Get the reverend. Oh, yeah. You have opened the gates. That is good. My men and I are eager to see our Arl again. Shall we enter the main hall together? It must be held if we are to regain control of the castle. Yes, let's go to the hall together. Excellent. Let us go now then, and see what awaits us there. Oh, 
Why is your face that way? So these are our visitors. The ones you told me about, Mother. Y yes Connor. And this is the one who defeated my soldiers. The ones I sent to reclaim my village. Yes. And now it's staring at me. What is it, Mother? I can't see it well enough. This... This is a woman, Connor. Just as I am. You lie! This woman is nothing at all like you. Why, just look at her. Half your age, and pretty too. I'm surprised you don't order her executed in a fit of jealousy. Connor, I beg you. Don't hurt anyone. M mother what? What's happening? Where am I? Oh, thank the Maker. Connor. Connor, can you hear me? Get away from me, fool woman! You are beginning to bore me! Maker's breath. What has happened here? Grey Warden. Please don't hurt my son. He is not responsible for what he does. So he's the evil force you spoke of. No! Don't say that! Well, he is Connor didn't mean to do this. Got a demon it was him. that mage, the one who poisoned demon. He started all this. He summoned this demon. Connor was just trying to help his father. It was a fair deal. Father is alive. Just as I wanted. Now it's my turn to sit on the throne and send out armies to conquer the world. Nobody tells me what to do anymore. Nobody tells him what to do. Nobody! Ha 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 ha! Quiet, Uncle! I warned you what would happen if you kept shouting, didn't I? Yes, I did. But let's keep things civil. This woman will have the audience she seeks. Tell us, woman, what have you come here for? Um, I came to stop you. I'm not finished playing! You can't make me stop! I think it's trying to spoil my fun, Mother. I... I don't think... Of course you don't! Ever since you sent the knights away, you do nothing but deprive me of my fun! Frankly, it's getting dull! I crave excitement and action! This woman spoiled my sport by saving that stupid village! And now, she'll repay me. Enemies of I won't. Okay, Codex updated. We'll read this before we start fighting. I feel like I'm sleeping, but I guess I'm not. While most of the bands and arles of Ferelden cart their children with them to the lands meet in interest of eventually marrying them off, Connor has spent his entire life at Redcliffe, and is hardly surprising. The child possesses a gift of magic. By law, he should be taken by the Circle of Magi at the first signs of abdicating his claim to Redcliffe. Instead, the boy was kept out of the public view and his magic hushed up, with disastrous results. All mages are, are beacons that attract the attention of fate spirits. Because of this, they are trained and tested by the Circle to ensure that they can withstand attacks from malevolent fate creatures that seek entry into the waking world. Untrained, Connor grew the attention to, of a powerful demon that tore the veil asunder. Alright guys, let's do it. I am better now, I think. My mind is my own again. Blessed Andraste. I would never have forgiven myself had you died. Not after I brought you here. 
the fool I am. Please. Connor's not responsible for this. There must be some way we can save him. Well, I'm not about to kill a child. I do not know if we can save him. Demons do not listen to reason. He's not always the demon you saw. Connor is still inside him, and sometimes he breaks through. Please. I just want to protect him. Isn't that what started this? You hired the mage to teach Connor in secret, to protect him. If they discovered Connor had magic, then they'd take him away. I thought if he learned just enough to hide it, then... Uh, where's Connor now? Why did he run? I think he ran upstairs, to the family quarters. Violence scares him. I, I know that sounds strange. He may have run up to his room, or... Or he might be waiting in ambush. I don't know. The fighting may have scared Connor into... coming out again, and so he ran. So you're saying he may be vulnerable? I... Oh, perhaps. Is there... Is there no other way? Where's, uh, our human? Upstairs in his room. I think the demon has been keeping him alive. So if we destroy the demon, then... Then my husband may perish. Hmm. Yes. So you had no idea you hired an assassin? None. I trusted Loghain. Why wouldn't I? How could I have suspected the mage he sent would be a murderer? And Eamon knew nothing of your plans. Do you not realize what you've done, Isold? Eamon would only demand we do the right thing. I was not going to lose my son. Not to... to magic. Uh, so now she's gonna... There's a few ways that you can play this out. You can kill the boy. And she loses her son. Or you can make a deal. And he's still possessed and she still loses her son to the circle. Or, you know, um, later he becomes a pet, uh, you know, possessed uh, in, you know, the Inquisitor one. Or <coughs> we save him and she still loses him to the circle. So, would that be an so terrible? Magic runs in my family. The ones who had it were all terrible, sinful men. I didn't know what to do when I found out. And so you brought doom upon us all and death to your own son. No. No, please. There must be another way. There must be something we can do. What are our options? I wouldn't normally suggest slaying a child, but he's an abomination. I'm not sure there's any choice. We can't kill a young boy, demon or no demon. Please don't say we're considering that. I do not like the idea of hurting the boy, but... Connor is my nephew. But... He is also possessed by a demon. Death would be... Merciful. No! What... What about the mage? He could know something of this demon? If he still lives, we could speak to him. And this is another thing that, you know, different people can act a certain way different times. Listen to, like, you know, all the opinions that are going on here on how to do it. And, you know, nobody knows the right thing or the choices that they have until it's presented itself to them. Um, yeah, I would advise against that. He's not trustworthy. I would agree. Anything he told us would be of questionable value at best. And it's Can we do nothing oh. else? There may be another way. There we go. Though I don't see how we can accomplish it. We can confront the demon in the Fade, though not easily. What do you mean? The demon is within Connor, is it not? Not truly. It is complex, but the demon's true form lies in the Fade. We can use the connection between the demon and Connor to find and battle it. So you can enter the Fade and kill the demon without hurting my boy? Technically, yes. 
Though entering the Fade requires both Lyrium as well as a group of mages to perform the ritual. Neither of which we have. I understand. Can we do nothing else? And here again, options. Other one, you know. Um, there must be another way to enter the Fade. You can find Lyrium and more mages at the Circle of Magi, if they would even do it. And the Circle Tower is not far from here, and they owe me. Indeed. It should not be difficult to get what is needed, provided we have the time. But what will happen here? Connor will not remain passive forever. And I will take that chance. Go to the tower quickly, then. The longer you are away, the greater the chances of disaster. And options. Very much options, you know. Putting every mind to work together. Come on, guys. Out of your battle. Okay. Um... Great lef lessons, you know, when you think that you're pushed to the wall and there's no options. If you gather, you know, a group of people that are doing the same thing and you have many options and many ideas, even if you disagree or dis, uh, you know, or agree, um, there's always options to do the right thing. So, um, that's probably long enough for my video today um, and we'll see you guys tomorrow where um, we go ahead and um, we're going to search tower or the castle a little bit and then we're going to head out do some side missions and uh, gather the mages to free Connor. So I um, hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye now.